Hang on to your hats because you're about to go on a heck of a ride through time, space, and the multiverse. Dr. Michio Kaku has been described as today's Einstein in many elite circles. Add his genius for comedy and passion for the new frontier of string field theory, of which he is co-founder, and you have a veritable stand-up, theoretical, physicist comedian. Dr. Kaku takes subjects that are nearly impossible for our current minds to understand and reduces them to common analogies, bringing incredibly exciting new possibilities for mankind into clearer focus. All I can say is have fun with this one. visions you mm -hmm. hopscotch humanity through our phases of evolution right from where we are now which seems somewhat primitive on a large cosmic scale right and through this journey you talk about our interface mm -hmm. our conscious interface with technology mm -hmm. including the world of computers etc can mm -hmm. you speak to that a little bit right now in terms of where you think we're going in the not too distant future in our interface with technology and then we're going to go on from there mm -hmm. Well, we physicists have asked about what civilization will look like a hundred, a thousand, a million years beyond our technology. And when we look in outer space, we actually look for paradigms that we may see. Uh, we look for what are called type one, type two, and type three civilizations. Uh, we don't look for little green men. We look for the en energy signature of planetary, stellar, and galactic civilizations. Where are we in that mix right now? Well, uh, first of all, type one civilization is a planetary civilization. Uh, they control the weather. They control earthquakes, volcanoes, anything planetary they would control. Sooner or later, they exhaust the power of a planet. Hurricanes and tornadoes are child's play for them. And they eventually start to use the power of their star, not just to get a suntan, but to play with solar flares, to literally play with the entire star, to ignite stars, to, to play with stars, like we play with coal or, or fire. Eventually, they exhaust the power of a, of a star, and they become galactic. They begin to colonize huge sections of the galaxy, and they start to use black holes, for example, as their primary energy supply. Now, if you look at this, excuse me, this scale, then you have to wonder, where are we? We are type zero. We get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. However, on, uh, with a calculator, you can calculate when we will advance to these various stages. If we simply grow at 3% a year, which is very modest economic growth, then energy consumption also grows at 3%. And we will hit type one in about 100 years. Now, you can already see the emergence of a type one civilization everywhere you go. When I open the newspaper, every single headline talks about the birth pang of a type 1 civilization being born right before our eyes. What does that look like? First of all, the internet. What is the internet? The internet is a type 1 telephone system. That's all it is. We are privileged to be alive to see the birth of a new planetary type 1 telephone system. The language of type 1 is already uh, out there. Most elites already speak English. You can go anywhere on the planet Earth, a uh, scientific elite, a uh, business elite, cultural elite, and they all speak English. So we're already beginning to see a planetary language being formed. A planetary economy is also being formed. Look at the European Union. These nations have killed each other for the last 5,000 years, ever since the Ice Age melted, ended. And why are they banding together to form the European Union? To oppose us. And who's us? We are NAFTA. Okay? So you see the emergence of a type one economy emerging. And globalization and outsourcing is part of this. A teeny weeny part, just mm -hmm. a small part. People react to globalization, but they don't realize it's much bigger than just globalization. We also see the beginning of a type one culture. You can go anywhere on the planet Earth and show people two pictures of a man and a woman, instantly recognizable by anyone on the planet Earth, Madonna and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you now know what type one culture looks like. It's going to be rock and roll, blue jeans, rap music, hip hop, youth culture. That's going to be the currency, the language that this type one civilization is going to speak, going to, going to enjoy. So we're already beginning to see the beginnings of a type one culture, entertainment, language, energy supply, uh, politics, beginning of a language, and the beginning of just the beginning of a type one system. Now we are type zero. 
So the transition between type 0 to type 1 is the most important transition in all of human civilization. Think about it. It's the most dangerous of all transitions because there are some people who don't want to be in type 1. They instinctively in their gut know that a type 1 system will be a system of uh, different discourses, of different ideas and clashes of ideas and, and so on and so forth. And these people who don't want this transition are the terrorists. In their gut, the terrorists know that we're headed for type 1. They can't articulate it. They don't know the, the larger outlines of it. But in their gut, they don't like it. They would rather be in type minus 1. So, however, I believe that this transition from type 0 to type 1 is the most important transition in the history of human civilization. And we are privileged to be alive to see the beginning of this transition. Our children and our grandchildren will complete the greatest transition in the history of the human race. Is this not inspired by absolute necessity because we can't live off of dead animals and dead plants as, and fossil fuels indefinitely? Is that kind of a next It's point? being forced upon us. Yes. In other words, some people say, let's try to stop the clock. Maybe we don't want to be part of a planetary civilization. It's too late.